welcome to your yoga practice. Today, we're going to break the myth that blocks are for beginners. Blocks, in fact, are not just for beginners. Blocks are an enhancement to your practice because they allow you to bring that ground closer to you. If you have really short arms, it makes different poses more accessible. They actually give great elevation when you're trying to access some <laughs> arm balances. And they even give you a perch if you're learning how to fly. So we'll explore some of the ways that we can use these blocks to fly. And we'll start with doing some boat poses with pickups. And if you've done a Shtanga primary series, you've seen this before. Have the blocks right by your hips, kind of in front of your hips. And then sit back onto that more cushiony part of your booty, not your sit bones. And then your legs can be with your shins parallel to the mat and your feet flexed. Or you can straighten your legs, whatever you pick. Keep that same thing for all the times that we do this. Your feet can be flexed or pointed. And we hold for one, two, I won't count too slow, three, four, and five. Cross your right ankle over your left, hug your knees towards your chest, plant your hands down, and then pick up. Set down, boat pose, one, two, three, four, five, left ankle over the right, press down, pick up, lower down. Again, <laughs> boat pose, one, two, three, four, five, right ankle over left, we're alternating that, press down, pick up, Again, <laughs> boat pose, one, two, three, four, five, left ankle over right, hands down, pick up, and down one more for good measure to make the five, one, two, three, four, five, right ankle over left, Pick up again, and down. I extend your legs, Whew, wiggle them out. Awesome. So without the blocks, it's just harder to lift yourself up, and maybe you weren't able to lift, maybe you were able to lift higher than I was, um, whatever the case may be. Excellent job. All right, take a little breather here, allowing that to sink in, all that hip flexor and core work arm work. You're doing awesome. All right. So the next thing that we are going to access with our blocks is a perch for crow pose. So setting up your blocks so that this is where you're going to put your feet. So step onto your blocks. Ah, your feet are kind of close together. Your knees are a little bit wider. And then you'll see that when we're crashing down, our heels are lifted. That's fine for them to be lifted. Hands are nice and planted and your knees can already go to your armpits. And so all you need to do is tip forward and then maybe you practice lifting one foot, you're lifting the other foot. Maybe you lift both feet. You look forward. And so this perch is great to start getting into your crow pose. Hmm, because you're already there. Already there. All you need to do is lift up those toes, press into your hand, belly button towards your spine. Oh, so it just makes it a lot more user-friendly maybe. And maybe you're simply rocking forward to stack and then lifting a foot, lifting the other. 
whatever it is that you want to try because this perch just makes it a little bit more accessible. Awesome. <sighs> Next up, leave the blocks about there. This is where your hands are going to go and then step in front of the blocks. Your legs are wide. All right, kind of squatting down and then start to wear those legs like a backpack. So sliding each shoulder close to your knees, plant your hands onto the blocks and sit down on those forearms. Wiggle your feet back and then maybe lift up those feet and you hook your ankles together. And so this is arm pressure pose. You can turn this into dragonfly, firefly, titibasana. Not sure if it's dragonfly or firefly. And then release. So having your, having your hands down on blocks for that, this makes it a little bit easier to <laughs> access. And then it's the same thing if you ever want to try elephant pose. Elephant pose is fun, it requires an open hip though. Let's start with our left leg out and then our right leg after rocking the baby, after doing some hips back and forth. Maybe you wear the right leg like a backpack. You place your hands onto your blocks. You push and then you lift. Don't know why this is elephant pose, but this is elephant trunk pose. <sighs> and show you on the other side because we must be balanced. Right leg out. And then remember to rock the baby, taking those steps to open your hips. And then maybe you wear that left leg like a backpack. Plant your hands on your blocks. Start to press up. Lift up that right leg. It's a lot of quads on the right leg. And a lot of inner thigh to hug in. And then release when you're ready. Awesome. Okay, so the next one I'm going to be honest with you. I very rarely take flight, not full flight. Um, the point is not to perfect the poses. I must tell the same thing to <laughs> myself. So we are going to do a flying pigeon using our blocks. So place the blocks at the front of your mat. If they're double colored, pick the color that is the most inspirational. And come to standing. Come into a chair pose. Bring your right ankle over your left knee and then sit down into the standing pigeon pose. All right. And then fold forward, bring your hands down to the blocks. Okay, so you're going to make chaturanga arms. So your forearms are going to be parallel to the mat. And your arms are bending at a 90 degree angle. Your right shin is going to settle onto your triceps. And then you're going to start wiggling that left foot back. This is my slightly more awkward side. Maybe you kick that heel towards your glute. And then eventually you kick that leg up. I just can't get the leverage on this side today. All right. And coming on to the other side, we'll see how that one works. <sighs> and the blocks just make it really nice to get into this fold in your pigeon. All right, so let's see if I can get a little bit of an extension here. A little bit more. It's a little closer. <laughs> and then blocks also make it very nice to forward fold without a lot of strain. And I'll show you one final way that blocks make a life so yummy in yoga. Because let's be honest, all the things we just did weren't necessarily yummy. Come to sit on your mat, straighten your legs, have space in between your legs. And then make a nice block tower. This is going to be where your forehead goes. 
Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, bring your hands by your side and then walk forward and however far you can fold. Your goal is to get that forehead center onto the block. So maybe it is a full block tower that you do. Maybe you want to lower it. Maybe you need more than two blocks. Find your version and remember the purpose of a forward fold is not to flatten your body on top of your legs. It looks cool. Yeah, that's not the point. Careful with your blocks, they do move. Hmm, so finding your happy place. Remember, pressure, maybe this isn't something you know yet. Pressure around your third eye center is really soothing. It calms our nervous system down. It's a really cool acupuncture point. If you've ever gotten acupuncture, sometimes they place a needle right there. I've gotten it once, maybe twice, I think only once. It's interesting. Hmm. All right, when you're ready, come up. Face the front of your mat. Maybe you have a red mark on your forehead. <laughs> I probably do. All right, thank you so much for practicing with me today, for exploring all the things you can do with two blocks. That wasn't all the things you can do. For exploring some of the things that you can do with two blocks. I hope that you enjoyed and that you have the most beautiful day. Bye.